Season 3 of Star Trek The Next Generation became the real beginning for the show. The changes made for that season would see the series become one of the most beloved Star Trek series ever created, with fandom continually hungry for more. Season 4 of TNG would continue the best laid plans of Season 3 and expand the series to new heights. But what was the story behind this new season? Well, today we find out. Hello and welcome to Backtrack, a web series that focuses on the background information of any given topic in Star Trek. In this, the continuation of our look into Star Trek's history, we'll be taking a look at the making of Season 4 of Star Trek The Next Generation, and all the behind-the-scenes information on the making of this cult classic phenomenon. So let's get started. Season 3 of Star Trek The Next Generation was a complete success. Fans of the show were pleased, the gatekeepers of the original series were changing their minds about the show, finally seeing it as Star Trek, and the series itself was bringing new fans into the franchise. But the question quickly became, will this series be able to maintain its new image? Gene Roddenberry was ill, having multiple mini-strokes after decades of drug and alcohol abuse had taken its toll on the creator, and Rick Berman who day by day was gaining more and more control over the show, was steering this series in the direction it needed to go to become an amazing outing into the Trek sci-fi universe. With the success of the character focus of Season 3, the decision was made early on to continue with that idea, but with a few changes. First, Season 4 would have an unspoken family theme to most of its episodes. Fandom would be able to watch the crew of the Enterprise-D not only deal with their own family members, much more prominently, but also how the crew themselves were becoming a family. Also, the Season 3 cliffhanger of The Best of Both Worlds Part 1 would unintentionally change the show for the better, when the powers that be realized that they couldn't just continue the show after the two-parter like nothing happened. The crew had been through a massive ordeal, that shook the very core of the franchise itself. And there should and would be repercussions to that shaking, especially for Captain Jean-Luc Picard himself. The good captain, the pillar of Trek morality, had been assimilated and used to kill 11,000 loyal Starfleet officers. So for the series to act as though everything was fine the next day would have been a step back rather than forward. The second change to this season would be the notion of serialized storylines. A reoccurring theme throughout this season would be the brewing of a Klingon Romulan plot against the Federation, coupled with Worf's efforts to reclaim his family honor. The goal here for the team was to give fandom a sense that although things seem great on the surface, underneath that gleaming everything is perfect view, is a very real possibility that the Klingon Empire could once again become the main antagonists for the series. Finally, it was also decided to show the growth of a secondary character, in this case Miles O'Brien. It was hoped that by doing this the ship would feel much larger and much more real, showing that even the minorest of characters had an important role that was very important to the starship. And this aspect was, of course, a complete success. In fact, it was so successful that when Deep Space Nine began its production, it almost immediately was decided to bring O'Brien onto the station as a main character, connecting the fandom back to the next generation through a character they already loved. This season would also mark the series' 100th episode with Redemption Part 1. Gene Roddenberry and the cast and crew celebrated this event with a cake and were interviewed by Entertainment Tonight. Season 4 would also see the departure of a main cast member, Will Wheaton, who played Wesley Crusher. Wesley had never been popular with the fans, and Will himself hated the character, but the reason for his departure was far more personal. Because of his age, the producers of the show tended to treat Wheaton like their own child, rather than an actor with dreams and aspirations. Season 3 had made Wheaton very unhappy right off the bat, when a producer of the show refused to let him have an additional week off so Will could do another movie, 
stating that Will was an integral part of the episode being filmed that week, which is very understandable from a production standpoint. However, the truth was far more sinister, as Wheaton barely had a role in that episode, which he was told he would be so integral to. Rather, the producer merely had him sit around the set that week basically doing nothing. This soured Wheaton about being on the show, and it was something that festered and grew over season 3 and 4's production until he requested to be let out of his contract with TNG in favor of New Horizons. His request was ultimately granted, with the caveat that Wheaton would say it was his choice and that the break was amicable. It was actually a sad departure for the actor, as he truly felt a part of the Star Trek family, and as a result, he would agree to return to the role several times over the remaining seasons of the series. Will Wheaton, though, is not done with Star Trek by a long shot. In a companion series for the new Star Trek series called The Ready Room, Will Wheaton would act as host, interviewing guests and discussing the implication of the episode released that week and The Ready Room has been a huge success, and I wouldn't be surprised if Wheaton himself would end up in a future episode of Star Trek Picard or Lower Decks. Denise Crosby would also return once again this season, this time playing the role of Commander Sela, the half-Romulan, half-human daughter of Tasha Yar, again revealing the consequences of previous episodes coming back to haunt the crew. Season 3's episode, Yesterday's Enterprise, had provided a new in for the actress, with Yar heading back in time to the prime timeline from an alternate timeline, meant that Yar could potentially appear again. The problem, though, was how. With the Enterprise C's destruction in the year 2344, and this season taking place in 2367, meant that 23 years had passed for the lieutenant, and so, if she did appear again, she'd have to be aged 23 years, something that could be tricky if not done well. The other option, however, was to have Crosby return as another character, the child of Yar and a Romulan, and have that character have all the great qualities of her mother, but using those qualities as a loyal Romulan officer. The opportunity for drama in such a scenario was too hard to ignore, and thus Sela was born. Season 4 would also see the Doctor's overcoat make its debut, as Gates McFadden would discover she was pregnant, and the production team needed something to cover up this fact, as there would be far too many questions if Crusher suddenly had a baby bump. And McFadden would actually receive a bit of a backlash for her participation in the Season 4 episode The Host. Of course, the episode introduces us to the Trill, and at the end of that episode, we see that the Trill Slug is placed inside a female host. Well, with this, some fans were outraged. As McFadden says, Some people were outraged at any hint of homosexuality in this episode, and in fact, my character was even accused of being homophobic by a small group of fandom who saw Beverly's rejection of a female as being against the Roddenberry vision. As I continue to research behind the scenes of these various Trek shows and seasons, one thing has always made me stop and kind of chuckle. As open-minded and caring as Trek has always tried to be, some of fandom has always been hateful and downright unaccepting of the basic fundamentals of the franchise, something which sadly continues today in this the second golden age of Star Trek. The Blu-ray release of the season in the remastering edition also has a little interesting backstory. You see, the episodes The Wounded and Brothers would also see deleted scenes added back into them basically at the 11th hour. Only months before the Blu-ray release, a Canadian Star Trek collector submitted several early Next Generation work print VHS episodes that he owned to the webmasters of CBS Television. These tapes included several episodes which themselves had several deleted scenes included in various episodes of the season. While most of his tapes, nine in total, were uncovered far too late to be included in their corresponding Blu-ray releases, being from earlier seasons, the Wounded and Brother tapes were recovered just in the nick of time, 
though the restoration team at CBS Digital had to scramble in order to have these scenes in question cleaned up in time to meet the deadline of the planned release. Unfortunately, a third episode, Devil's Do, was also discovered to have additional deleted scenes, but this episode could not be done in time to be included in the Blu-ray release. Just like Season 3 of the series, Season 4 of Star Trek The Next Generation would also be a huge success. The addition of the family-type elements, along with various consequences of actions included in the season, would allow the series to breathe and to make it feel more realistic. Fandom's trepidations on whether Season 3 was simply a fluke would evaporate, and Star Trek The Next Generation would become far more than anyone could have predicted. And when we next return to this Star Trek historical overview, we'll be taking a look at the making of Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, and all the drama behind the scenes that went into the making of this last of the original series feature films. Hope to see you then. Thank you for watching today's episode of Backtrack. What do you think of Season 4 of Star Trek The Next Generation? What was your favorite episode of the season? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel connect with you on a familial level? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.